Welcome to my 72 hour fasting documentary slash guide. A documentary because this is day one, we're filming all the way up to the very last hour and I will condense it into a watchable video and a guide because I've done this before. So every six to eight hours, I'm gonna have tips and tricks to help you along the way and I'll let you know how I'm feeling at the time because it could be things you might relate to during your 72 hour fast. Seek medical advice before doing anything this extreme because of course there's risks. You should talk to your doctor first, but I know you're just searching the term out there on the internet, 72 hour fast, looking for somebody with a similar experience. Everybody's body's different. You may not receive the same results as I do off a 72 hour fast. So last time I did a crash diet, I dropped about 30 pounds. Let's get started. So here I am weighing at 217 pounds to fight at the Arnold. Wait a second. So if you're new to this channel, okay, if you're wondering why does this guy have armor on his legs and what's the Arnold? So I was so fortunate to be invited by Detroit Fight Club to fill a slot on their team to fight in the Arnold Fitness Expo. That's me in the black and yellow. And I was also incredibly fortunate to be asked by the House of Royal Horse to, to help them and the Barbarians fight the Dallas Warlords in, in the, one of the final fights of the day. Basically, we're in armor, beating each other with axes and swords. If you like this kind of stuff, search the term armored combat or Buhurt, B-U-H-U-R-T. Of, co of course, you can find similar content here on this channel. So a 72 hour fast was very important for me because I was weighing in very heavy, 217 pounds, and I had a ballroom dance competition shortly after where I wanted to have a goal of 190. And I dropped all the way down to 191 pounds. Man, I was so happy I hit my goal weight. <laughs> but I'm still not happy with my weight. I want to lose a little bit more. Of course, it only bothers me. I'm sure everyone thinks like, oh, you look fabulous out there. But if, if you're like everybody out there on the planet, you want to look how you want to look. It doesn't matter what other people's opinions are. So I want to get a little slimmer. I'm going to document my next fast and diet. I have 24 days before Boston to slim up so that I look even better in those pictures. My new goal weight is 180. Let's see how much we weigh right now. I've just been eating like a normal American diet. Nothing crazy, but let's see what the scale says. I have shoes and some clothes on. So we're up to 205. So, so here's the thing. Uh, there's Things that you want to consider before you get started. Things that you just need to know, which could make a 72 hour fast harder for you or a diet in general. Things you cannot change about your body are your age, um, genetics, as in like body type, right? Uh, you, you all know that some people are naturally more skinny. Some people just seem more round and, and filled out. It's harder for people like that to lose weight. Um, things, genetics, like uh, your gender of right now what your gender is. Your, the gender of your organs, let's say that, that produce hormones because hormones play such a big role in this, right? So three things that uh, work against you naturally that are like almost impossible change. Things that you can manage uh, very easily is stress. You have to be stress-free. Do not do this when you're gonna be um, stressed out, like with if you just had a breakup with your guy or girl or something's going on at home and you have some problems because stress makes you hold on to fat. You wanna start your fast with a clean, clear mind. And here's a great tip to start off. You wanna actually be arrogant, not like mean to other people and like arrogant, like walk around like this, but you wanna have a sense in your mind, like, you know, I'm, I'm too good for, for all these people and their garbage diets. Arrogance, like when I used to power lift, I was so, arrogant in my head i would be a very nice person but in my head you have to walk around you just have to know that you're like the best that it's the best way to get through this i'm above all that garbage that you guys are eating don't say it but think it i'm starting this on july 4th people are gonna have pizza at work um who knows probably soda two liters and, and it's gonna be tempting so if you're very tempted by food or if you cook food for family members and things like that you just have to have in your mind like okay like there's a lot of things tempting me and you have to be able to turn it down. So you want to time your fast around uh, a stress-free environment and times you're not going to be tempted by goodies like, you know, holidays or birthday parties, things like that. Uh, here's some important things to know before you start. What to expect right away. I'm going to start dropping weight. Uh, it's typical. I might lose like eight pounds in, in two days and a lot of that's going to be uh, fluid. You're going to pee a lot. You can pee a lot, not that everybody does, but I do. I will probably pee so much in the first couple of days because I'm not taking anything in that water just sheds my body. So I have to be careful I don't lose electrolytes. So I take a multivitamin in the morning and at night. 
every every day for these three days. And then when I go back into eating, if you ever heard of anorexic people, when they start eating or people had surgery and they had to rest their gut when they start eating, you have to do it real slow and careful and with electrolytes because you can get something called refeeding syndrome, which means like things like your magnesium, which is very sensitive and potassium might just get totally out of whack and drop. So you wanna be able to stay um, electrolyted. So make sure you take vitamins. Uh, and, and here's another thing. You might have been searching for a fast and seen something called a water fast. That does not mean to overdo it with water. I don't know if people tell you to or not, but you just wanna drink what maintains your body throughout the day. Don't drink extra water because you're peeing a lot out. You, you don't wanna dilute your, your electrolytes in your body either. So drink a normal amount of water, maybe a little extra to, to try and make you feel full to keep the belly aches away, but you just wanna drink normal water. Don't overdo it. You could actually cause even worse problems staying out your, your electrolytes in your body. The one other thing I will have a lot of trouble with is staying awake. If you're not eating, you can be tired. Uh, you know, I'm gonna do a little bit of cardio. Let me give you a tip about cardio here. Um, you don't want to overdo it. When I'm doing cardio on a fast, I don't get my heart rate up. I do um, light um, treadmill elliptical work and of course like my dance and sword practice and things like that, but I don't overdo it. You don't want to totally make your body break down and create all kinds of chaos and cat cat catabolic events in your body because you have muscle breakdown things. Just take it easy. For three days, I do suggest you do some cardio. 30 minutes to, to an hour a day, but keep it light, walking, jogging, don't get your heart rate up too much. You wanna be able to continue having a conversation with somebody, you don't wanna get out of breath if you wanna gauge it like that, so you don't ever do it. But here's the thing for me, staying awake, coffee. I'm gonna rely on coffee. Uh, I might sometimes resort to caffeine pills, but I'm just drinking black coffee. Black coffee, no cream, no sugar for three days. I'm gonna to have to have a, probably double what I usually do for my intake to stay awake. So I think that covers it. Um, our new goal and some important tips and tricks for you, uh, especially being arrogant and I'm above all this garbage that everybody's gonna be eating for the next 24 days and that's just how you're gonna have to live. So we're gonna start right now. Uh, I will post my first update about six hours from now because I just ate. So we're gonna uh, continue that every six to eight hours and I'll condense it into the video. I hope you enjoy. Subscribe if you haven't already uh, and we'll catch you here for the wrap up at the end. This is the first six hour checkpoint. Feeling good, not really feeling hungry. Depending what a lot of us ate in our last meal or how frequently we eat, you know, some of us are gonna feel real hungry, some are not. You know, this, this is the, an easy part right here, the first six hours. So here's my first tip because it's gonna get harder. So have an accountability partner, which is basically somebody that you trust that you can talk to. Like I actually texted mine right now and I was saying that, you know, I'm back on my diet. I, I texted my goal weight of 180 and what I'm doing. And uh, this is somebody that you trust that will look out for you, you know, consider well being if, if you're freaking out and you think I can't do it, you know, and they, they could probably be your coach to either help you stick with it or, you know, tell you, you know, maybe you should just try this again later at a better time. Somebody, somebody has to have some mental clarity because you can lose your mind a little bit, go crazy without food. So it's somebody you want to be able to trust to make a good, a good decision for your overall well-being too. So tip number one is have an accountability partner and be honest with them, truthful, check in with them once in a while throughout the day, make sure that you update them how you're doing or any concerns you have. And, and it's nice to hear what they have to say too about your progress. 12 hours in, 60 hours to go, starting to feel hungry. So I weighed myself actually before I came to work. It was right after I woke up. I was 201 and a half pounds. So my tip right now is don't obsess with the scale. Weigh yourself though when you wake up after you go to the bathroom. That's going to be your best time of the day to weigh yourself and get the most accurate weight and log it every day. Keep track of it. So don't obsess about the scale. You don't want to be sitting throughout your day being like, oh, oh, like I'm gonna check see if I lost some weight. Don't worry, it'll, the weight will drop. Don't obsess over the scale. It's a waste of your time and it's just gonna play with your head. So you wear yourself every morning and maybe at night, every 12 hours, but that's it. Don't obsess with the scale. 18 hours since my last meal and I'm feeling great, but I was actually a little tired. So I bought myself a coffee because I have a few things to do before I go to bed. Now, I urge you do not add artificial sweeteners to coffee that you buy at a chain. It's You have less control over what's in this right here that you buy than if you made it at home, you know, it's specifically a black coffee. 
The reason why is artificial sweeteners, some of them actually can contain some calories. The last thing you wanna do is create some kind of insulin release right now during your fast. I've, I don't have as much links research to back this up, but talking to uh, actual dietitians in, in real life, in the medical field, I would avoid artificial sweeteners that you get like in energy drinks because if you drink diet soda, energy drinks, that sweetness can trick your body to thinking that it's gonna get some sugar and it could throw your whole fast out of whack. I'd love to get into this more in detail, but this is gonna be a short video, little updates here and there. If you're a coffee drinker like me, or you just need energy, skip the energy drinks, straight black coffee. If you buy it, do not add anything. Only add a sweetener that you might have at home that you know is absolutely zero calories. And of course, I would just would not even recommend that at all because that sweetness could actually trigger uh, a negative response during your fast. All right, keep up the good work. Just slept six and a half hours, feeling pretty good. I'm actually not feeling hungry at all right now, but get enough sleep. There's a, plenty of research that shows lack of sleep is, an, is a risk for obesity. So make sure you do that. And besides, I just killed six hours. We're that much farther into the fast, 28 and a half hours since the last meal. We're now exactly halfway through a 72 hour fast, like on the dot. So it's getting a little rough, you know, everyone's eating watermelon, there were donuts, cookies and stuff at work. Uh, I actually just smelled a pack to see if they really smelled like chocolate. Uh, you know, a little hungry, but dealing with it. The thing that happens now is just like time slowing down. I'm just staring at the clock passing time and things is, are going to get a little rough and if you're making it this far congr congratulations we're halfway there so for your fast and my tip right now is to keep uh, a journal or document things it really helps to keep to stay focused and on track like i'm making this vlog it really helps because i know hey i can't give up now we're halfway there so if you just jot things down keep track of times or things throughout your 72 hours to just keep you focused and sit and keep working towards your goal, it's a lot easier to stick to it when you're actually actively tracking it at the same time. Actually, last time I did a fast this long, I used an app that recorded pretty much everything I did every every six hours, I just write a little entry. So do something like that, uh, fight the boredom, it's tough, but uh, you might be a little hungry too. You can make it, we're halfway there, not much longer to go. We're about 43 hours into the 72 hour fast, doing great, I'm actually not feeling hungry at all right now really I haven't felt hungry for a while now so my tip right now I'm gonna do some cardio my tip for anyone out there doing cardio I, I also do it pretty much every day regardless so when you're doing a 72 hour fast don't overdo it just get your heart rate up a little bit you can take it easy for a couple days if you're used to lifting weights every day go easy on yourself you don't want to overdo it when you're fasting totally fasting especially because you're not gonna have anything to recover you don't want to create all kinds of waste products from catabolism in your body uh plenty of machines out there you actually even have target heart rates where it'll say like cardio zone fat burning zone you want to stay in that zone you can look it up online on on heart rate and what is the difference between like cardio or uh fat burning so that is my tip today don't kill yourself in the gym during a 72 hour fast but definitely try and get some cardio in to burn a little bit of calories keep yourself awake and be uh on your and increase some of that weight loss by burning calories that's all i gotta say right now i'll catch you in the next update 12 hours to go it's a good time to start planning your next meal tonight's been rough everybody here at work has been ordering food from restaurants it smelled so good i heated up a patient's food it smelled so good a, a good tip here at home if you're trying to avoid eating especially if you're bored don't keep anything around the house that you like to eat because it's very tempting it's easier to ruin your fast so keep the pantry empty. And then uh, my other tip is you're in the home stretch 12 hours ago. Start planning on your next meal. If you're starting to get hungry, just think ahead. You're almost there. No way that you're gonna give up now in the last 12 hours. My first meal is gonna be something easy. I might just be like tuna fish and oil, but something that my diet is gonna transition into is low carb, real low carb. So we're gonna do something easy like tuna fish and oil get something in my belly, get me happy like I'm eating again, and uh, I'm gonna fine tune my diet after that. Check out for some following videos. We'll see how, how good I get down to my goal weight of 180. Here we go, the moment of truth. After a 72 hour fast, how much weight did I lose? We're not gonna hold the phone because that would just add weight. Oh my God, 
We broke into the 180s. 188.2. I'm weighing myself as about five days post. I'm at 189. Five days post 72 hour fast. I just survived a 72 hour fast. Actually about five days ago and I've kept the weight off. 72 hour fast for weight loss. Fasting to detox is a myth. It's garbage. Don't spend an ounce of your time or a dollar of your money on that myth. There's plenty of research that will show you that it's just a joke. And uh, the true definition of detoxing is when you're on dialysis because your kidneys have failed and you're relying on the machine. When you're tw 24 to 48 hours into this, you might be noticing that, man, I've really peed out a lot. I lost a lot of fluid, a lot of electrolytes. Don't overdo the water. Do enough, do enough to maintain. I drank a lot of coffee, by the way, just black coffee. It's okay to do something like that. But don't overdo the water because you don't want to dilute your electrolytes even more than they are. So multivitamin, pill, day and night. Don't buy the drinks. Cardio, take it easy. Ease yourself into diet. Many diets, you could do like a Mediterranean diet, a low-carb, no-carb diet. You could do something like the zone diet. That's worked for me in the past. But what I did, I lost some weight over three days of my fast. And I slowly transitions, transitioned to five meals a day. They're less than 500 calories. I really don't count carbs. I'm not eating anything like um, with a high glycemic index. Uh, I don't, you know, I'm avoiding insulin spikes as much as possible. And if I keep it up, I'll be gold. And you will too. So here's my little video. Leave a like, comments. I won't know if you like this kind of stuff unless you let me know. This is a fighting and dancing channel, but I, I do stuff like this once in a while that might be, be a help to get someone else's uh, outlook on a fast. So good luck. Watch the video. Like and comment if you'd like to see stuff like this and I'll make another one. Enjoy.